Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Bill from KeystoneWeapon.com. <clears throat> uh, something, uh, one of the common topics that I've been seeing on the forums and on some of the Facebook pages, and also I've been getting some messages and emails about and stuff like that, are, uh, oh my God, my grip safety doesn't work on my 1911. And uh, there's tons of drawings out there online that'll that'll show you sort of how the grip safety works with the inside of a 1911. And I decided to. Uh, take a few minutes and actually show you what your problem potentially could be. So if you have a, um, whether you have a GI beaver tail or an extended beaver tail, in this picture it's a, a GI beaver tail, it doesn't really matter. Um, essentially what you are looking at is that your grip safety when being depressed um, is supposed to pivot on this point right here and this right here should disengage so this part right here should go up this little uh, part of your uh, beaver tail grip safety should go in the upward position which will then allow the trigger bow so this is a little GI trigger right here so it will allow that trigger bow to then be able to to go in the rearward motion which will then activate your sear and you know, move your sear, allow your hammer to, to fall. Um, but what occasionally happens, um, sometimes it's due to modification, sometimes it's due to, well, it can be due to a lot of reasons. Sometimes it can just be due to fatigue of springs, um, is this uh, can stop working. So if you, for instance, and we'll use this uh, double stack uh, 22 TCM I have here, but it really doesn't matter. If for some reason, um, your, uh, your firearm, and we'll, we'll cock this one, and uh, it is safety checked, of course. I don't play with live firearms down here unless they're going into my bullet trap. But uh, let's say you have your firearm, and pretend I'm not pushing on my grip safety over here. I'm just pushing on it just a little bit. It, uh, it goes bang, whether you push this grip safety or not. Um, there's a couple things that can contribute to that. I chose to use this particular weapon, the double stack, because it has this awesome feature of being cut out exactly right where we need to be able to see. So if I turn this little light on here, you can actually see the, the back end of the trigger bow, and you can see right there that little, that little piece in there moving up out of the way. If I pull my trigger it will not go past a certain point but if I depress my grip safety it then will so there's that little bitty guy right there and I don't know that I can even find something small enough to be able to point to it but right here you can see that it's it's got a, a notch and an arm that sticks out which is actually this right here this not can't see that sorry about that this notch and this arm which allows it to uh, stop the trigger from being depressed. So the 2011 is cool because you can actually see that engagement happening. Um, but in a, a regular 1911, in, in like say your A1 style here, your your regular single stack, you wouldn't be able to actually see that. Um, although that's that's still what's happening. So one of the first things I have people do is obviously safety check your weapon. Um, you know, it, you're, you're going to have the, the problem where no matter what, it actually goes off. And the first thing I'll have them do is check for spring fatigue, which would be essentially pushing up on the back of the, the beaver tail or pulling out on the back of the beaver tail and seeing if that alleviates your problem. And if that does, then you're in luck. That's a really easy, quick fix. So if, if pushing up on this um, makes it stop or pulling back on this, makes it stop then it's then it's a good news situation because at that in in that particular situation and i don't know if you can see down in here but right there that little silver guy right there where that flashlight's uh at that is the top part of the sear spring which is right here so it's it's this part of the sear spring right there that you're seeing right inside this guy here. It's right there. You can just barely see it. Um, again, on, on a regular 1911, you won't be able to see it at all, but it is your rightmost part of the sear spring. 
and you'll see that this has quite an arc to it and that that thing's job is to push on the uh, is to push here against this creating a, a force going that way on this uh, beaver tail grip safety and occasionally these can weaken just a little bit so if that's the case if if by pushing out on this it stops your problem from happening um, that just essentially means that it needs a little bit more tension here and that's something that's that's pretty easy to do you know you can you can get a small pair of pliers or even just use your hands and and give it a little bit of a bend up here um, this is a pretty tough steel to bend. It's spring steel, obviously. So you don't want to go too crazy, though, because you can break it. Give it a little bit, put it back together, and try it again. And if that alleviates your problem, then that's great. It was just a little bit of spring fatigue or, or whatever. If that doesn't fix your problem, then you have more of an issue. Um, if that doesn't resolve your issue, then there's two things. It's either the actual trigger itself that is not quite tall enough or sometimes this can get tilted down in a downward direction if you have a, some aftermarket triggers are a little bit weird um, they can have like an STI trigger for instance might have a trigger bow that goes like this it's it's a little bit more skeletonized or something and maybe the geometry is not correct or it's this angle right here that's been cut by the uh, by the factory um, usually these are a little bit, they might be stamped completely out by a manufacturer or they might have been worked just a little bit to make them, you know, a really nice uh, crisp engagement so that it, so that it just barely takes the tension to be able to, to fire this weapon. Um, so in that situation, you need to investigate, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, these particular angles and see if they're actually interacting properly. Sometimes on a, some ultimate manufacturer triggers they may they may skeletonize pieces out of the trigger um, you know here and here or they may skeletonize out you know a bottom portion or a top portion or both and because it's not tracking correctly correctly if it's if it's tilting down then the uh, the, the safety portion here can can miss that part of the trigger and in that case you're going to have to get that trigger realigned which isn't something that's in incredibly simple to do with normal you know hand tools and, and whatnot but it can be done um, so what i'm making this video for is just essentially to show you to first try to make sure that it's not just a weak spring because that does happen um, and it happens pretty often i've fixed quite a few of them that are like that uh, via the internet or in person um, you know, the first thing we'll do at the range when somebody says that is I will safety check the weapon, push up, and if it works like this, it's as simple as dropping the main spring, pulling the beaver tail out, getting this spring out, and giving it a little bit of a tweak. Um, don't mess with these springs here unless you know what you're doing. Only play with this little left one right here. This is the only one that has any uh, say on the beaver tail grip safety as it is. Um, bending it all the way down here isn't going to give you much help because the mainspring rides up a big main, a big portion of this uh, this particular spring. So you want to make sure that your curve and your bend is up here. Hopefully that helps. And uh, you know, if you see any annoying ads on this video, I do apologize. You know, click on them or something. It can help us out. Whatever. Um, Anyway, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to email me. If you have any video ideas, things you want to see, I'll do whatever I can to help you out. Email me at keystoneweapon at gmail.com or bill at keystoneweapon.com or whatever. Get a hold of me. Stay classy. Shoot safe.